the goal. It could be too far. No, he's thinking. Oh, what a catch! It puts a spicy forehand out in front of Naomi Morcilla. Woo for the win in Canada. Darren Woo! Santos with the layout grab. Oh, that fantastic grab. The claws of Chapa. Canada just became the world champions. Canada and the rest of the world, you're listening to the Huck and A podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Theo Wan, now living in Kingston, Ontario. And I'm Danny Proby from Vancouver, BC, and together we are your coast to coast guide to all things Canadian Ultimate. Speaking of Canadian Ultimate, Theo, is it snowing where you are? There's no Ultimate here. I mean, if we were playing Ultimate, it would be very Canadian Ultimate to be playing in the snow. But what you been up to, my friend? I'm looking outside the window. There is snow. Uh, yeah. Kingston has a different type of snow than uh, than than Toronto is what I was told by my colleagues. Mm. So they're like, you need to go get your winter tires, and it's going to be different out here because um, we're by the lake. Got the lake effect snow. Uh, I've been just watching a lot of college football, so I don't expect many in the audience to care about the bowl season. But you know, I'm all about the bowls. I'm trying to watch every single bowl. I think there's going to be like 42, so uh, 41 or 42, so. The goal is to watch each one during the holiday break while I rest up for the upcoming busy varsity season uh, starting in January again. So that's what I've been doing, watching a lot of not Frisbee, but football. Have you seen the, this is not football, but it's definitely not ultimate. Have you seen the Netflix series Last Chance University or Last Chance U? Come on. Okay, come on. Of course. Which one? You got to talk about the basketball or the football? Because they got well, both. And I watched both the football fired. one before, but I'm I'm on season two now of flat, like the basketball one. It's so good. It's so good. It's so entertaining. East LA. East LA College. East LA. Come on. The Huskies. Let's go Huskies. The Huskies. Anyways, I'm surprised you watched that. That's good to know. I mean, that's awesome. I like I like all the like sport Netflixy like sports documentaries and they did on like the Bulls before. Like that was super exciting. Oh, Last Dance. Yeah, and like when they did the one like uh like Naomi Osaka for tennis and stuff. It's just it's all it's all good. It's very exciting. So that's been doing a little bit of that. And what else? Um, just been having a lot of one-on-one chats with my athletes on both UBC and Team Canada. Um, little spoiler alert, I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about that in our subs only section. But we're not in subs only right now. We're just in the get to know you part. And I feel like I know you so much better now that we've had this little chat. So that one minute is that true. one minute. I feel really connected to you. So now that we're connected, we're bonded. Let's go to the news. We now have breaking news. So the main news you may have heard of, mm. uh, we're going to talk about it briefly. We're not going to, you know, spend a whole episode on it, but uh, if you want, you can listen to the emergency podcast that I had a chance to do. Uh, not about a week ago, probably half a week ago. Uh, got a lot of listens, Danny. I did not expect that, but uh, people want to hear about a thing that's never really happened before. So um had a chance to kind of think about it more, see some comments and things. But I've kind of shared a little bit of what I thought already. But here's your chance to kind of maybe share a little bit of what you think as you've had a, a few days to to think about the news. Well, for the people that didn't listen to that episode, do you want to give them a little like recap or refresh on what the news was specifically? That is a good point. I well, could, I could just all, say I could say just go to the to, the I you know. should listen to the emergency podcast anyways, but if you decide not to, I will fill you in. So, essentially um a team, the University of Toronto was uh their title was taken away from 2021. Um you can read the full press release on Ultimate Canada's page um as well. Essentially a player played more than 5 CUCs and it was found out um, in 2022 because they were asking about eligibility in 2022 and it was found out that they were ineligible in 2021. So essentially McMaster is now back-to-back champions. Let's go, Mac. Uh, Queens moves up to silver from bronze and then UVic West Coasters get a bronze medal. So that's a very short synopsis of what happened. Um, there's been a lot of uh, comments, uh, especially on the, the specific post there. Um, speaking uh, mostly about Instagram here. Uh, that's usually where the, the comments come. Um, so, Danny, you've had a chance to see the comments. You've had a chance to to hear about the event as well. So I'll let you uh, kind of share your piece first. Yeah, it's been it's been interesting. I mean, Ulti World made a post about it. 
Khalif El Salam is tweeting for about Ulti it. World? Yeah, sh- Theo, people don't need to know <laughs> behind the scenes that we are also Ulti World. <laughs> My name is on it. What do you mean? No one reads the author. It's just That's like true. it's just like everyone thinks like Ultimate Canna is this like big conglomerate. Like it's like one person. <laughs> it's like one person, like one dad, like on Vancouver Island. <laughs> I hope he's not listening to this episode. <laughs> anyway you might know know. so like i think that like people think that it's a lot bigger than it is anyway so ultra world (laughs) ultra world posted about it amazing um khalif el salam tweeted about it lots of people are tweeting about it um commenting and so my my first take is that i kind of feel bad for everyone involved like there's not really any winners i mean like if you're like uvic or whatever you're like sick now we get medals like that's not really how they would have wanted that to go down I'm sure, I mean, I, I can't speak for them, but that's, I think they would have rather have won a, a game to get a medal kind of thing and instead of being tied to controversy. Um, I could be wrong, but I also just think that, like, if you're that player, it sucks. If you're that team, it sucks. If you're Ultimate Canada and you're you find this out and you have to follow like ethics you have to kind of follow protocol and and do what's right and you have to kind of raise an alarm even though maybe it might make ultimate canada look bad like i just i feel like there's no winners honestly so it's it's a tough situation it sucks um and it just makes me feel like we need more processes and manuals and things in place but I think in general, we might be talking about this in our New Year's wish list that we will do later on um, as as a different podcast episode. But if somehow we could get Ultimate Canada to have a little bit more money, these are the types of things that like we could have systems, manuals, more employees, people checking things. Um, These kinds of things wouldn't slip through the cracks. I think it's like, it's tough when this kind of thing happened right at the tail end of like, I don't want to say the pandemic, the pandemic is still technically here, but like once things are starting to back, open up again, a whole bunch of employees are laid off. There was like how many people working for Ultimate Canada and there were CUCs, there was UCI, all of this stuff happening and not enough people, all volunteers, they have full-time jobs to, to, to technically. Um, so it just sucks. It sucks. I, and I, and I feel for the players, I feel for the teams. Um, and I, I don't have an opinion other than it sucks. Did I say that it sucks? <laughs> you can say that one more time because sucks. once again, if you're the team, I said this in the emergency pod as well. If you're McMaster, I don't know how you feel mm. um, because you might feel, yeah, it's great that we got this gold medal, but we didn't technically uh, earn it. Um, so I did appreciate the comment though about uh, the fact that even though McMaster is back-to-back champions, they'll still be ranked low in 2023. Uh, <laughs> McMaster, you just have to find out if you get ranked low again. Um, Spoiler alert. We don't know who any of them are. It's a faceless army. <laughs> Somebody yeah, yeah. else commented they don't that have stars. too. They don't have stars. Um, oh. Directly quoted from my mouth. Uh, I mean, one of them's on my team for Team Canada, so they've got some good players. <laughs> there you go. That's true. Um, yeah, and I think Danny, you you made some very good points of like there needs it to sucks. be. I, well, it sucks, and then also the processes. Like, it would help if there was a, a database that players could kind of. Um, see if they you know have eligibility things like that Mm -hmm. um it's kind of like there's two sides of players the player needs to be responsible for knowing their own eligibility and like figuring it out um obviously i'm going to compare this to like a much larger organization in the ncaa but it's like a football player in america doesn't have to worry about figuring out if they're eligible like someone will tell them the the compliance office in their school or the ncaa office will say hey you are um eligible to be redshirted or, or whatever it is um so obviously this is a much smaller organization and when it falls down to one person literally checking you know lots of athletes it makes it quite difficult um so yeah i'm i'm not really gonna say more than that uh i think we've at least i've talked about it enough um so we're gonna move on from that uh uh story and hope obviously hope it doesn't happen again and uh Yeah, if there's more to the story that comes out later, we'll obviously report on it. So um, moving on to more, for me, it's positive. I don't know if this news is positive for you, Danny, but tell us about an upcoming tournament and where it's going to be held. 
So USA Ultimate announced the location for college nationals for D1 and D3. So it only really applies to D1 for Canadian teams. And it's in Cincinnati, Ohio. So I have mixed feelings about this. I'm just like, there's a lot of places in the States. And I'm like, yes, I would love to go to that place. There's very few places in the States that I'd say, yes, I'd love to go back to this place for the 10th time. And Cincinnati is one of those places. So I was really hoping a little San Diego action again. No, I could visit that definitely place. Definitely not happening there. I mean, come on. Like, I was hoping it'd be more of a destination selfishly because I have like a four or five day gap from since from nationals to uh, our final training camp for TC. So I was like, if it's in San Diego, I'll just stay in San Diego and then I'll fly to Boston. But I gotta stay in Cincinnati. <laughs> go to boston so um well you're saying a few days after uh if if your boy ends up at d d1 and d3 nats maybe uh we'll uh go hit up some baseball games you know i'd love that go see some reds i am a big you reds know fan. It's the reds let's go i mean i have their jersey actually so this is not the get to know you section chill theo we're gonna talk about baseball later but um so a little like i don't know i'm, I'm not like personally super stoked and somebody's like why not i'm like it's it's Hashtag Cincinnati's and hashtag, it's like, very hashtag funny. Midwest. Hashtag Midwest. It's expensive for us to fly there too, compared to a lot of places on the West Coast. So um, I like being in my own time zone. I like the sand between my toes. <laughs> what do you think about it? <laughs> As someone who loves the Midwest, um, I just love Midwest America. So uh, being a Michigan State fan, I love the Midwest. So uh, for me, I think it's great. Um, the reason why we're also bringing the news is this in the news is so that more teams are saying like, Hey, though Danny doesn't like the Midwest, I want to go to the Midwest with my team. So that hopefully motivates you to try to qualify. There's a lot of good college teams out here that I think if you just decide to go to a couple tournaments, get a little training in and then head over to the regionals, especially the teams in the Metro least in my neck of the woods, you really have a chance to make it. So please, I'm begging try to make it because i think it would be cool to have more than well ubc you got to qualify your team looking good but let's get some uh more canadian flavor at the championship speaking of my team looking good it's so funny because i'm on like the ulti world college women's chat and i can like he- like see them trying to do some like preseason rankings and they're talking about all these teams and i'm just like quiet I don't want to give them any information, even though I think I'm in that chat because I have insight. They're like, yeah, I think UBC is not really graduating too many people. And like, they got all, all these people. And I'm like, I don't know. Sounds, sounds like they could be pretty average, best, mid at best. I don't know. Um, so it's pretty funny because um, I think a lot of teams did graduate quite a few people. Um, UBC graduated only a couple and got a couple hotshot rookies. So. Don't tell anybody, but I think they're pretty good. I mean, you might see their roster on Instagram or something, but I did see McGill's name pop up. This is a little sneak preview for the for the fans at home, but McGill's name popped up in the open uh, chatter, the, oh. the college chatter is all I'm saying. McGill, it was low, but like they were <laughs> they they were named as a team to watch out for, basically. Yeah. So um, there's a reason why I talk about them. Um, so. For one, they actually participate in the series. So please do that. I heard Queens, you know, I don't want to say it, but I heard Queens, maybe some other schools gonna go, like they to like at least some tournament. I don't know. Do we'll see. it. Um, so that wraps up our news segment. We got a cool main event coming up for you. We talked about U24s last week, the rosters. This week we get three unique perspectives, uh, unique paths to making the U24 team. So we have a player from the women's open and mixed team. That's coming up for you in the main event after this short break, including our sweet holiday bumper. Let's go. This episode is sponsored by VC Ultimate. Now, if you know me or you've seen me on the fields or you've seen me coaching, you know I'm repping VC Ultimate. VC is a company that proudly puts values and company before profit. VC is the world's best source for quality design and all of your ultimate needs. So check out VC to get your gear now. Hey, this is Theo. And I'm Danny, and we are wishing you and your family a merry, merry holiday. And you're still listening to your Coast to Coast Guide for all things Canadian Ultimate. Merry Christmas! Oh, 
right. Welcome to your main event. I am, I know Theo and I are both very excited, but I particularly am super excited to have these three guests on. We have Alex Bedard, we have Naomi Peterson, and we have Grant McDonald. So all three of these athletes were recently selected to the under 24 national teams in their respective divisions. We have an open player, a women's player, and a mixed player. So I feel obviously very personally attached to this episode and I have been kind of following along with your journeys for a long time and I get to coach one of you this cycle. So um, Grant, because I'm coaching you, we're going to start with you. Can you say who you are, where you're from and how you started playing? Uh, Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm Grant McDonald. I'm from, I grew up in Lawrencetown, but I play mostly or I play all the time in Halifax with Halifax Ultimate. Um, I kind of got into Frisbee just playing in high school. The touring players would come and do clinics, and they would kind of teach us, like, oh, you throw like this, or you do, like, a hammer like this. And we all thought that was really cool, um, but I didn't really kind of attach myself to it. Um, But in about grade 11, after all those little clinics and stuff, one of my buddies was like, hey, let's just go get the day off school, let's go to a, a tournament and have fun and like play. So I went there, had a bunch of fun. Um, and then kind of a, a recruiter came for the uh, juniors program. And he was like, let's kind of come play. Um, we have a new juniors program we're building. And I was just like, no, I, I, actually, I don't really want to do it. I don't want to take it that <laughs> seriously. And then the next, next year, we all kind of had fun again through the whole cycle and the touring players were coming to do clinics and we're kind of getting more into it. And then that year I said, yeah, like I'll do it. Um, did the juniors program. It was the new Scotland blues. It was super duper fun. And then I just kept playing ever since. So, yeah. That's awesome. I think it's, it's very rare to have players coming from not the big four Quebec, Ontario, BC and Manitoba. So two out of, Three of our guests here are coming from outside of those provinces, which we feel very lucky to have that. So Grant's coming from the Atlantic, even more rare. But we have Alex Bedard hailing from somewhere else, if you can guess. Alex, you can introduce yourself. When you started playing, where you're from, give us the whole lowdown. All right. So um, my name's Alex, Alex Bedard, and I'm from Edmonton, Alberta. Um, I started playing maybe seven years ago around there. Um, and my dad was the one to first introduce me to the sport. Um, I used to play soccer and then kind of stopped playing that. And, uh, he decided to, you know, I, he asked me if I wanted to play, um, and I decided to try it out. Um, and then that year I played on the juniors program, which was fallout then. And then after that, I kind of moved to play with AFC and uh and kind of and i'm still playing with them uh with afc now so that's kind of how i got started playing ultimate so now i stupid anecdote but i remember many years ago being like a grown-up at cucs and seeing this child playing on afc how old were you when you started playing with afc i feel like you went to nationals like before you were like legally allowed (laughs) yeah i started playing afc when i was in the 10th grade so i think i was like <laughs> 16 when i was uh playing at cucs i had to get like a exemption and all that kind of stuff to play so yeah that was the first year i played was in i think it was in ottawa was the first yeah. time i played so and you played uh, like a lot like you played well too and i, I remember like hearing talk around the tournament They're like have you seen that kid on afc so very cool unsurprising that you made team canada again i guess <laughs> And Naomi, last but not least, tell us all about yourself, where you're from, when you started playing and everything. Okay, so hi, my name is Naomi. Um, I kind of grew up knowing what Ultimate was because both of my parents played. Um, So during the summers, I would play youth, probably starting when I was 15 or 16. Um, And then in 2017, um it was the first year I played Wicked. My older brother had started playing um two years before with the um, the junior boys program and because I 
just want to be like my brother. I couldn't let him have all the fun on his own. So I decided I wanted to try it out. Um, I was playing basketball at the time. So it was still a summer thing for me. Um, and then throughout COVID, I kind of transitioned, transitioned into playing ultimate as like my main sport. So yeah. Thanks everyone. Appreciate uh, all of you sharing how you got into it, but now the real question, well, not real question, but one of the next questions is when did you decide that, Hey, I've been playing for a while and I want to try out for team Canada because for every person uh, it's going to be different. So kind of talk us through how you decided, maybe it was someone um, telling you about it or someone encouraging like a coach. Uh, Naomi, we'll start with you. Uh, when did you decide to try out for TC? The first time I tried out for TC, the first U20 tryout I went to was kind of just for fun. Um, it was like within the first few years I started playing. So I just went for, you know, kind of for fun to get good experience. Because um, I kind of knew I wanted to go to the next one in two years and aim to make that team. Um, and then the more recent one in May, I went in feeling very confident. Um, but just didn't turn out how I expected it to. And after not making that cycle, um, I, I was hungry for to make a TC, TC team. So, um, yeah, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to try it for U24s before the U20s. Um, but after after I'm making it, I was kind of like, yes, I want to do this. I want to make this. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I decided to try out. Danny and I will always say this on the podcast. You should go to a tryout because you never know what could happen and you gain lots of experience. So we're seeing that example right there. Alex, how did you get started with uh, TC or wanting to try out? So I think the first tryout I went to was a U24 tryout when I was 16. I think it was for like the 2017 U24s and I decided to go because I really wanted to make the U20s team and I felt like I kind of needed that exposure um, like the year before so that I had a better chance at making the U20s um, and then like at the U24 tryouts I also um, just gained experience and that kind of stuff so I always kind of knew that I wanted to try out for TC like once I started playing ultimate it was kind of just about like what process to like what what the the best way was to make that team so and then after that i just always wanted to try out so yeah all right thanks everyone naomi we're i mean you're kind of already talking oh we forgot we forgot mr mcdonald we can't forget the atlantic we can't forget it's late out there in the east coast but for some reason danny fallen asleep over here <laughs> throughout on my own kid grant, <laughs> yeah grant we can't forget about you the mix squad come can on can we just now. cut so that grant, out though like let's actually cut that out i was confused okay. i was like reading the next question i was like naomi we just said this and i was very distracted <laughs> okay i mean can you take a note as to like to cut this part out uh yeah what time is it like eight 30 ish. Okay, so we'll just cut it after Alex talks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Alex, thanks for sharing that. Last but not least, Grant, we're going to head to you and uh, you're going to tell us your experience. Uh, yeah, so mine's a little different than um, kind of both of the other guys. I When I first started, I was kind of still kind of super new to the whole process. Um, I first was able to do kind of like a ID camp when I was just starting out. Um, uh, Fish actually was the person that was there kind of running it, the women's coach. So um, that was cool to see all these kind of big like coaches that have a bunch of experience come and like show us really hard drills and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. But I was still really new, so I didn't really have kind of the skills to be someone to go to a U20 tryout so I didn't really ever do that and then kind of the start of this year I was like okay well maybe like I can look and see when the next U24 cycle is or there's people around that were making attempts at it and going and like making alternate spots so um, I kind of looked into like when the next trial was and kind of prepared from there so this was kind of 
I guess my one year that I wanted to kind of go and put it all on the line and kind of give it the best shot I could. Definitely paid off. I'm very happy you decided to try out. Um, Naomi, you're kind of talking about how you kind of had a couple attempts at trying out for TC and I was at one of those tryouts. So your first one, when I guess I didn't really, it didn't seem like you were trying out for funsies. Like I, I remember you played quite well and we knew that you were young. We knew you had another cycle, but you definitely caught our eye at that tryout. And then I know that you didn't end up making it two years later, which is what you had just said in your intro. But, and I wasn't at those tryouts, but then I personally saw like the stats line for Stella this summer. And I was like, <sighs> Naomi Peterson revenge tour. So I'm definitely curious kind of after a couple of cycles of not making it, and then this time you end up making women's, which was your first choice on the thing. Or I think maybe, yeah. yeah. Anyways, regardless, it was like a first choice top team. How mm -hmm. did like not making teams in the past impact your training or your mindset going into this tryout? The very first tryout, um, not making it, it wasn't like surprising. I thought I had a shot at it, um, but I wasn't like surprised or extremely upset about it. Um, I thought it was a good experience and the second one, um, not making that one was a bit tougher. It took me a bit to adjust to it. Um, a lot of, I've, a lot of people supporting me, um, and they have certain, they, don't, they have like expectations about how good I am and how good I should be. And I like to, I like to meet them. Um, so I definitely felt like I disappointed myself, but also, you know, my friends and some of my family as well. Um, so after, you know, I was sad, got over it, and then was motivated to try out for this U24 team. Um, up until the second U20 tryout, I never really did any training on my own outside of like practices and games. Um, because I still had a lot of basketball going on and it was still kind of like balancing both of the sports. Um, and then over this summer, over this summer um, it kind of became my number one sport and I put in a lot more time on my own, I would say, um, just to get better, to get ready for that tryout. Um, yeah, I was hungry. I really wanted it and I wanted to... Um, you know, prove people not wrong, but pr prove them right in a way. Um, because a lot of them believed that I could make this team. So I just wanted to meet those expectations, really. You yeah. had a phenomenal tryout. I was very impressed. And, and I know <laughs> I've said this to you before, but I was like, oddly like, proud of you. I don't really know you that well personally, but I feel like after seeing you try out a couple times or knowing about you for a few years, it was like, it kind of felt like a win for like, just like never, like not giving up. So I really um, was very excited for you. I, my brother who sends the podcast a lot and he, you know, sent it to me last week and was like, Danny talks about you. And I listened to it and I got a little warm and fuzzies and you said you were proud of me. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for sharing that story. I know I know your brother is definitely a big fan of the podcast, so always appreciate his uh, listenership there. Yeah. Um, and for those who listen to the podcast, you know that I like talking about this topic, which is highlighting people from not the big cities so and big provinces. So we're going to hype up Grant McDonald right here, uh, coming from the East Coast, um, quote-unquote small towner. Uh, I don't know how big Halifax is, but... Um, for the purposes of this uh, question, it's going to be considered a small town. Uh, what does it feel like to be making a Team Canada from a place where not a lot of athletes come from? Uh, what does that mean to you and also your community as well? Yeah, um, I think it's really exciting. Um, just like you think about kind of how the community in the Atlantic has been building up for so long. Um, like Marty, like Marty Glant made U20s um, just last year, and now he's on the men's team 
and he's from New Brunswick, right? So those kind of Newfoundland, New Brunswick, kind of Nova Scotia provinces that were really starting to kind of ramp it up and really make a big solid community. And that's just kind of testament to like the old club players and the old kind of um, people that kind of came before us. They put a lot of work and like volunteering, like I said before, coming to high school, show like kids how to play Frisbee or putting work into like a juniors program. And it's like starting to build up now. We got a lot of good, like young players really starting to kick off and you can start seeing that in like the club scene. Like there's some younger kids coming up on circus playing really good. And especially Madhouse too. That's another new team in Halifax. That's all from development. They're playing really well too. So um, I'm excited to see like a few years from now, like there's probably some high schoolers new that are coming up and they're going to be probably really, really good with all the effort that the community is making. So I'm just excited to see what, what's going on. Yeah, it's very cool. I think at the at the tryout there were we saw a lot of applications coming in to do the tryout from the Atlantic provinces and and we were just like, yep, 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 except 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 because we were just so excited to see so many people kind of wanting to to file and get that experience. So it's it's from from what I can tell it's definitely growing and you definitely have a lot of like adult support. There's a lot of people reaching out to coaches kind of saying if you need any help, if you need any information. So you do have a lot of support behind you. So I'm sure you've made a lot of people really proud. Speaking of pride, Alex, this is not your first kick at the can. You've played TC before. How does this experience feel different for you if at all? Uh, I think it feels it's it's obviously different um, because in 2019 I was part of the mixed mixed team, so playing on the open is obviously going to have like a bit of a different feel, uh, just because like the game's a bit different. Um, and I think also it'll be different because you know back then I was whatever 18, 19, so uh, I was like you know a couple years younger than I am right now. Um, so I think I feel like a bit more confident, um, a little bit more like just matured in my game and stuff. So I think that part is going to be a bit different on field just because I kind of know myself as a player a bit better and, um, you know, won't feel as much out of place as I did maybe then. Um, and then I'm, I'm just excited to, you know, get to play again. I was pretty bummed uh, that they canceled the tournament two years ago. Um, so I'm just happy that I get another chance to, to play against like the best under 24 players in the world. And then, you know, um, I think it's just different from how um, how things will be playing with younger players as well. Like, you know, when I was in when I was playing in 2019, I was the young guy um, and I'm kind of excited to be able to be that older player that they can kind of lean on and learn from and help them mature and, and get them ready for, you know, their their careers and that kind of stuff. So I think that'll be fun, too. So what you're saying is you're going to be offering the the sage wisdom. It sounds like uh, for for the players there, and uh, Alex, you get a chance to offer a little bit of wisdom right now in terms of telling us about how you got ready for tryouts. Um, I know you played for uh, in college as well. Uh, obviously, you had the club season. So how are you trying to like keep yourself ready to go for tryouts, but also not burning out? And like, there's there's a lot of ultimate playing as well. Yeah, I think like the most important thing going into tryouts is really making sure your cardio is up to par. Like, I think that's like the most important thing that and like keeping your throws like, um, like getting a lot of throws, especially as like the it gets a little bit colder. Um, but like tryouts are it's like two days. Um, and it's a lot of running. So you got to make sure that your legs can kind of handle that load. Uh, so I think like for me, I was kind of nursing a hamstring injury going to tryouts. Uh, so I just did like a lot of biking on like those fan bikes. Um, so whether that was like long distance kind of stuff or like high intensity, just kind of varying that and just trying to like get as much cardio as I could because I knew um, like my legs were just going to take a beating over those two days. So. And since you had that opportunity to try out before, you kind of know what's coming as well. So yeah. that's another uh, plug for going to tryouts, even if you think you're quote unquote not ready because you get that experience. So Grant, what are you training? How, what are you doing in the, the East Coast there? Uh, maybe you're practicing those throws in the wind. I don't know. But uh, how did you get ready for tryouts? 
Uh, yeah, kind of the same as what Alex mentioned there. Um, for me, it was more so lots of playing reps. So um, leading up to trials, I knew I was going to like go for it. So I won. I played with Madhouse and Circus for that summer. Um, that way I got different looks in different roles. And I think going into a triad setting, you have to be versatile because they're looking at everything. They're going to throw you on offense, they're gonna throw you on defense, zone. Like, so having a lot of different reps and different things and getting to try like, oh, like I never throw like this hammer to break this zone, but it's practice and I'm not in a triad yet. So I might as well like practice this throw. And then you get there and you've done it like 50 times already. So you know how to shoot that thing over there. So um, yeah, get a lot of throws in. Definitely, like Alex said, make sure you're ready for it because it feels like a tournament weekend, even though it's a tryout. And um, lots of reps. That's what I think. Just different scenarios, get ready for anything, really. Naomi, you get a chance to answer now. I know you said kind of during COVID and this past summer, you focused this as your main sport. So uh, what kind of training were you doing? You obviously have a high-level basketball background, it sounds like. So maybe carrying some of those things over, but uh, what did you do to get ready? For me, Stella was definitely the biggest thing over the summer that helped me get ready. Um, also, just getting reps in uh, with league during the summer as well. And then at the end of the summer, I took probably had like a week or two off before university practices started. Um, and that was probably what kept me my throws kind of intact before tryouts. Um, and then the weekend before tryouts, we had Eastern, which was some good practice, high level practice um, before tryouts as well. And then I also did a lot of individual throwing in just by myself, discs in the field. Um, yeah, just to get touches in. I, okay. Maybe this is like oversharing, but well, it's not oversharing, but at the tryout, I think it was like lunchtime day two. I don't remember which day it was. <laughs> Do you already know what I'm going to say? <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> everyone's like eating and like dying, basically recovering because their legs are like full of lead. And I look over and there's Naomi in the distance practicing your poles. What were you doing? <laughs> I was just practicing my backhand IOs. Oh, your backhand IOs. Before. I, yeah. I don't know. The, the morning, I think it was the second day. I just like wasn't, ha I didn't have the best morning, the best start to it. Um, so I just like took a sec to reset before the afternoon started. <laughs> oh, the morning on day two would have been the mixed portion. So you didn't, you didn't feel like you played that well in the mixed portion. We can unpack that later. Mixed ultimate's great, but um, we're going to, talk a little bit more about looking into the future. And so I'm curious for all three of you, now that you've made it, you've had your team meetings, maybe you've talked to your coach a little bit, you're in like the Slack group, stuff's bumping, people are starting to train. What are you feeling the most excited about? Like when you think into the future, is it world? Is it the first training camp? Is it XYZ? Maybe it's different. Maybe it's the same, but we're going to start with my mixed homie, Grant. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely excited to get back out there and kind of just the first training camp, you know, with my teammates. Um, just coming back to the tryout, um, when I first got there, there was so much different lingo. I had no idea what people were talking about. So I'm definitely looking to make some good chemistry with my teammates when I get there and kind of learn some new tricks from them. There's definitely different play styles um, compared to like east coast atlantics compared to like ottawa definitely compared to like out west so i definitely want to learn like how all those people play and the little little tricks that they know and hopefully they can learn one or two things from me and then we'll get running it'll be sweet so definitely excited just for the very first training camp just get out there yeah it's it's so fun having everyone together for the first time it's hard to even imagine worlds before you've even kind of like play all together so i definitely want to echo that the first training camp vibe is um it's a very special experience naomi love to hear from you next 
Yeah, my answer is similar to Grant's, I think. Definitely just getting to play with players that are older, more experienced than me, um, learning new things, and just getting better as a player. Um, short and simple. That's, that's it. Yeah. And Alex? Um, my favorite part of, like, the passing Canada has always been, like, just making friends with people from all over the country. Um, so that's something, like, I'm really excited to do is just meet everybody at the first training camp. And then it's always a lot of fun to, like, travel with everybody. So, like, I'm super excited to, like, travel to the UK with, with all the teammates and then kind of stay together wherever that is. And I think, like, that's always – that was always so much fun. Um, it's just like staying together in like a hotel or whatever hostel and um, being together for that whole week is a lot of fun. So uh, we're going to wrap up the main event here with your final opportunity to give. We talked about uh, Alex, you being a sage of wisdom here or having the wisdom. You're going to have a chance, all of you, uh, to give some wisdom. So. Um, we know that many in the audience will have tried out or will be trying out for some Team Canada's later on in their lives. So, um, yeah, any advice that you can give? It could be like uh, we talked about trial prep, but it could be like kind of some mental skills training. It could be like nutrition, whatever it is you can think of. So, Alex, we're going to throw you on the spot first. Uh, tell us uh, some good advice for the Huckney audience. Well, like tryouts are – like it, it, they're long and they're like, it's, it's always intense. Like it's two full days of like super high intensity and it feels like every rep counts. So like the pressure is super high. So I think like one thing that I find really important is um, like putting myself in situations where I'm putting pressure on myself and I'm trying to push myself to work as hard as I can so that, when I, when it gets to places like a tryout um, or even like games, like I feel comfortable in the situations and I don't have to think as much and I can just react because I think like you play your best when you're not thinking and reacting. Um, so I think like that's one thing that I find super, like really helpful is like being comfortable in those pressure situations is by practicing those pressure situations. Like that's one thing I would say to the audience would be like, try to do that as much as you can is get reps when you're really trying hard and when you are putting pressure on yourself. You felt those, uh, that pressure uh, in the club division as well. I know making it to the finals. So uh, clearly got that experience this past summer. Uh, now we get a chance uh, to not only play um, with Stella, like kind of in the fall or, or summer, but like also at worlds, which is really cool. So uh, your chance now to give some advice uh, to the Huck and the audience. Yeah, so my advice was actually given to me by a friend, Emily Marshall, who I know Danny knows. I think you do too, Theo. Um, I was talking to her the night before the tryouts, um, and she's given me a little pep talk, and she told me to do what you do well. She's like, you can play amazing defense. You can shut down any girl you want to. Just focus on that. Do that well. Do it consistently, and you'll stand up. Um, so that's what I tried my best to do, um, and it helped a lot. And then obviously another thing for me would be, like, as soon as you make a mistake, just forget about it and move on to the next thing because everybody's going to make mistakes. It's generic, I know. It's said a lot, um, but it's really true. Just forget about it and move on. And uh, last but not least, uh, the East Coast advice. Uh, yeah, I think whenever time, anytime you go into a tryout, it can kind of feel bigger than it is. And like Alex said, there's a lot of pressure on you. And kind of like Naomi said, if you kind of get stuck on the mistake, you can find yourself spiraling really, really quickly. So my big um, kind of piece of advice is have go there and have fun. Like play with confidence, have a lot of fun and like by fun, that just doesn't just mean like go in the drills and try your hardest. It like have a chat with your friend on the sideline or someone you don't even know. Just hit like hit them up, say what's up, and that also goes a long way. Like you're on these tryouts 
for a whole day. You might be in a group for a whole day. And the sooner you make chemistry with those like eight people, the sooner you're all going to start destroying people in drills because he had like a 30 second chat and he's like, oh, I like when you throw it deep. And then you score four times like that and you look really good. So have a lot of fun, chat with a lot of people and kind of don't dwell on anything like Naomi said, just go out there, play with confidence and you kind of find yourself on a roll and you'll do well. Three different answers, three different athletes. I mean, Team Canada can't get any better than that here. So first of all, I want to express my gratitude for all of you taking time out of your holidays. I know for Grant specifically, what time is it there? It's 11 p.m. at night when we're recording this for you. So I really appreciate you all taking the time to be here with us and kind of give advice to future generations and to kind of hype up your experience because I think it's it's you all had different paths and they're all admirable and there's a lot to learn from each one of you. So good luck with your training and I'll see you all super soon at the training camps and we're going to just to say goodbye and we're going to head to the outro after a quick break. So thanks everybody. Thank you. Hey, this is Daniel I, co-founder and captain of Danger Noodle, your 2022 CUC co-bronze medalist. And you're listening to the Huck and Aid podcast, your coast to coast guide for all things Canadian ultimate. Thanks for tuning in everybody. As always, we really appreciate all of y'all for listening and kind of like engaging with us and making sure that we know you out there. We know you listening. And when you quote us on our own Instagram posts, it's even better. So yeah, thanks again for, for your support all year long. I mean, we'll probably have one more episode before the year is up, but um, it's definitely a time for reflection and I'm reflecting a lot. I'm feeling very grateful to be given the opportunity to talk about the thing that I love with somebody that I am starting to become almost friends with. Almost friends is the real, uh, <laughs> that's the real caveat there. Almost friends. Um, not there just yet, but maybe another so two close. years. So another close. two years. Um, Danny, any, uh, you know, we're going to keep the outro short here, but any uh, things stick out to you uh, from the conversation that we just had? Hmm. That's a good question. I think they're all such different athletes, all three of those players. And, and so, I think it's not like every athlete that makes Team Canada is like cookie cutter. They look like X, Y, Z on the field. They they train like X, Y, Z. Like there's a lot of different roads that lead to Rome. Um, so I think so much of it is like is is a mind, finding a mindset and a training regimen and, and something that fits for you um, that showcases kind of what you got. Like Grant's just like staying loose, having fun, kind of like getting to know people. And and Naomi was like really dialing in on individual skills prior to the tryout. And Bedard is just like goaded and makes Team Canada all the time. It's in his blood. So they all kind of have like their different ways of getting there. And I think that that is inspiring for a lot of folks who might see their like local hometown hero that made it. And they're like, oh, I don't really like sky like this person or I don't like throw like this person. Not everybody needs to throw or sky like X person. So um, find your little niche, get really good at it. Try to round out your, your areas of weakness and just Get out there. Try it. How about you, Theo? I want to take the time to to shout out the people that helped them get there. Mm. They all referenced friends or family. Um, I mean, for Bedard specifically, he his dad played. So, I mean, um, Naomi as well. So, uh, And then for Grant, it, it was people, players that came before him coming to the schools and, and kind of getting that going. So, mm-hmm. um, whenever you see someone make TC, you often think of just that individual, but want the Huck and audience to think about also the people in their lives that help them get there because uh, it takes more than one person to do that. So uh, thank you to those who encourage the athletes and help them get to where they are, um, be it family or friends or, or things like that. Um, it's been really cool for me personally to see people that I've captained or, um, you know, played with um, make certain teams. Um, so it's always fun to see that happen, uh, to see them fly, you know, like fly, fly. what is it? The butterfly analogy or whatever. So, that that's those are my thoughts uh danny you mentioned this earlier in the intro but stay tuned for the subscriber only where you can hear danny talk about some of these one-on-one calls kind of it's really a coach's corner here it's not gonna be every week but this week it's the coach's corner with danny danny's gonna do that one solo um and danny's also gonna plug our socials right now right because she knows all about it 
I don't know. I have a really terrible memory. Um, and it shouldn't be hard, but I always, every single time I say our socials or our email, I like look at you for confirmation <laughs> that I said it right. Hucking A on Instagram. I think it's like hucking A at ultiworld.com. Yeah, it's hucking underscore A on Instagram. But if you search hucking A, you'll find it. So all good. Yeah. That, I mean, see, I'm still a year and a half or whatever no, it is. And, all good. Um, you follow us. Don't lie. You already follow us. So thank you for following us. I'll see you all in the subscriber only section. And stay tuned for episode next week where Theo and I will be talking about our wish lists, New Year's resolutions for Ultimate, Ultimate in Canada, etc. Gonna be spicy, gonna be saucy. We're gonna bring you all the heat. So see you next week.